Can everyone hear me okay? All right. So we're talking tonight and throughout Rohats about uh, Minzan Zuiho Osho's um, text, Jiju Yu Zanme. Um, this talk tonight is uh, Samadhi and the Illusory Mind. Um, so this, in case you, uh, most of you should probably know who Minzan is already, but just in case you don't, um, he was around during the late 1600s, the first half of the 1700s. And uh, for us in Soto Zen, for uh, Soto Zen philosophy, he was essentially the Maimonides or the Thomas Aquinas of his time. Um, he wrote a great deal uh, for Zen philosophers, for Soto Zen philosophers at the time, over 50 books, over 100 texts uh, that Menzan uh, put together and that we still have to draw on for our learning. Uh, so Menzan's texts are notable because he refocused attention at the time on the teachings of Dogen Zenji, uh, thus strengthening the philosophy of Soto Zen. And um, we at Tree Leaf are who we are. In fact, all Zen practitioners today are largely, Soto Zen practitioners are largely who we are because of the work that Master Menzan uh, did during his lifetime. Uh, one important thing in particular for us at Tree Leaf is uh, Menzan promoted teaching of Zen practice and knowledge to lay folk, which is something that we also um, promote and Jundo promotes uh, through Tree Leaf. Master Menzan is dear to us, Soto Zen people. Uh, he's one of the honored ones of whom we speak, even though we don't mention him by name always, when we're dedicating our recitation of the heart of the greater the Heart of the Perfection of Great Wisdom Sutra and the Identity of Relative and Absolute. He's an ancestor of our lineage, uh, which comes from Shakyamuni Buddha to Dogen Zenji, uh, to Niwa Rempo Jin, Zenji, uh, to Master Gudo, and of course to Jundo Roshi, Roshi and through him to all of us. So in this text, uh, the self-receiving employing Samadhi or Jijuyu Zenmei, uh, Minzan is writing to Zen followers in 18th century Japan, and he's writing about samadhi, and not just about samadhi, but how to come around to it. And just as a reminder, samadhi is a unity of mind or maybe a singularity of purpose, uh, maybe uh, like-mindedness, an intense consciousness that we achieve through meditative practice. And not just us, but many Buddhists, this is what they're, they're seeking. When someone says they're looking for enlightenment, the path to enlightenment runs right through samadhi. So in our Soto Zen way, Shikantaza is the fulfillment of samadhi. And there's more than that, more on that topic to come. Um, I'm going to read you the brief text that this talk is based on. Minzan Zuiho wrote, now I will explain in detail the way to clarify and rely on this samadhi. This is done simply by not clouding the light of your true self. When the light of the true self is clear, you follow neither Konshin or dullness, nor Sanran or distraction. The third patriarch said, when the cloudless light illuminates itself, there is no need to make mental struggle there is no need, there is no waste of energy. This is the vital point of the practice and enlightenment of the samadhi. The cloudless light illuminates itself, means the light of the self shines brightly. Not to make mental struggle means not to add the illusory mind's discrimination to the reality. When you make mental struggle, the light becomes illusory mind and the brightness becomes darkness. If you do not make mental struggle, the darkness itself becomes the self-illumination of the light. Then, for example, it is like the light of the sun or the moon illuminating everything. Mountains and rivers, human beings and dogs, 
etc. equally without differentiation or evaluation. Also, a mirror reflects everything without bothering to discriminate. Mumio, or the fundamental delusion, is called illusory mind. It is our discriminating mind with obstinate, which obstinately clings to body, mind, the world, and all things as being the way we have perceived and recognized them until now. For example, although something good is not always good, we hold stubbornly to what we think is good. Something evil is not always evil, yet we become attached to our own judgment and make it a preconception. Even if you think something is good, others may think it is evil. Fundamentally, such judgments merely accord with illusory mind, which manifests itself in the form of one's own knowledge, views, and experiences. This is true not only of our judgments about good and evil, but also our views about being and not being, hatred and love, etc. All of these differentiations regarding all existence arise from illusory mind. Originally, all beings are outside of illusory mind and are beyond evaluation or differentiation. You must realize this clearly and without any doubt. And that's the end of the section of uh, Menzan's text. Master Menzan is saying to Zen followers and specifically to lay folk, not only to monks, but to lay folk, to let go of a lot in order to find samadhi. Like a lot of Zen teachers, what he is sounding, saying can seem fairly simple, and in fact, he even says it is simple in the text. All you have to do is don't cloud your true self and you will find samadhi. Kanchi Sosan, or Zhangji uh, Singan, was the third patriarch after Bodhidharma, Bodhidharma um, and is mentioned in uh, Master Menzan's text. Um, and if you're counting, he was the 30th patriarch after uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. And he, he said, if you do this, then there's no mental struggle or waste of energy. It just happens if you let it. But there's the rub, isn't it? The if you let it part. Minzan explains that, all you, that this is all you have to do to get rid of Mumyo. I'm sorry, all you have to do is get rid of Mumio. So bye Mumio, I'll see you tomorrow. Mumio is the fundamental delusion. It's our illusory mind. Mumio is the great discriminator. It drives us to dichotomize. It makes us want to categorize and label everything. It makes us see things as good and bad, people we like, people we don't. We are us, but not you, and not all of us together. All the things and all the people are independent of each other. There's an old way of explaining Zen that we've all heard um, in which we proclaim all is one. But Mumio is screaming at us, no, we aren't. If we can get rid of this delusion of the discriminatory mind to reveal our true selves, Menzan says, then we will find samadhi. We will find uh, our true selves uh, shining their light brightly on our Buddha nature. The way that we do that, according to our honored one, Master Menzan, is a very simple thing. Practice zazen. Practice zazen. There's a paradigm of samadhi uh, historically as an object of attainment. And it's said that during the time of Shakyamuni Buddha and many centuries thereafter, that only a very small number of people, a handful of people actually achieved the state of consciousness that we refer to as samadhi. It was so elusive. There's a later paradigm of samadhi and one that is um, still very strong today for many Buddhists and others who are seeking some sort of enlightenment. And that's that samadhi comes as a sudden flash of great insight or a great awakening. Through practice, you unveil your true self, you attain samadhi and you reach a state of enlightenment. 
you might hear someone say that they were sitting or doing some other form of practice and a flash of samadhi fell on them like a great flash of insight. Then it was gone and now they're working to get it back. So the Soto Zen philosophy, our approach is a little different with our focus on Shikantaza. Our Soto Zen paradigm is another step in understanding the state of deepened consciousness or awakening. From our perspective, samadhi is out there, but it is not a goal. We do not expect to be struck by the lightning bolt of insight. Samadhi is not something we are reaching to attain because it is always, it is always fully within our grasp when we are practicing zazen. We can be present with goalless zazen and find ourselves fully plugged in to samadhi. It is available on the mat. It is available off the mat. It is available at every moment, which is why we try to bring practice to all that we do. So uh, we do this thing called anga, culminating in this rohats retreat to remind ourselves of this. In Anga, we practice and we practice. We practice practice. We try to remain mindful of bringing practice into our lives. And this is what Master Menzan's book, um, Jiju Yus Zanme, um, which is where our readings and lectures are coming from for this Rohat's retreat. This is what he was writing about, that Zazen practiced with body and with mind is exactly the Samadhi that has been sought since it was first attained by the Buddha ages ago. When we sit Zazen, we are awakening like the Buddha did, like the Buddhas we are. If we allow our ego to drive what we are doing, we, all we will find is dukkha, greed, anger, and ignorance. If we instead find ourselves in the cloudless light in, of our true selves, and we abide by the three pure bodhisattva precepts, which are doing all good, avoiding all evil, and living with compassion for all beings, then we will find samadhi. So, as uh, Master Menzen says, simple, right? Not much to it. Whatever struggle I have in finding my way to samadhi comes because no one can crack open my head and pour in knowledge and maybe more importantly, they can't pour an understanding. I have to find that part through my practice. I can learn from you, but I have to do the practice part myself. And my mind, uh, my mind can make up one heck of a story about how hard that is to just practice. No practice and the mental struggle that Kanchi Sosan wrote of intensifies no practice and my light is hidden beneath the clouds of a stormy night. So we do Ango. Ango is the coming together of the Sangha in peace to practice and to rediscover the beauty of our true selves. Ango helps us to blow those clouds out of the way so that our true light shines through. Our ango shows us clearly that our practice does not need to be some sort of elaborate concoction of ritual and form and chanting and knowledge. These things can certainly be a part of our practice and they really can help us a lot. They can help bring us to remember uh, and they can help us be mindful and they can bring practice to every moment. But the complex is only useful if it helps us remember the simple and the simple, the simple thing, the simple for us as Zen practitioners is the simple act of just sitting. The simple is just being there. When we practice together as a Sangha, we can step into that one-mindedness of Samadhi and because it is always present and always everywhere, we can do it together in a Zendo building. We can do it together hundreds or thousands of miles apart in our homes. We can do it together at different times. We are travelers across time and space 
in our sangha. When we're able, when we're ready, it is right there, right now, in this moment. All you have to do is take a step, a step into uh, practice. So I truly believe that this is what Master Minzen was writing about. If you open yourself to the practice of Zazen, you uncloud your light. You don't need to be a Zen master. You don't need to be a Zen monk. You only have to practice right where you are right now. And the most beautiful part of all of this is that we don't have to wait for Ango. We can practice together right now, right here, whenever and wherever we are. I can open my web browser and I can sit along with the most recent Zazen Kai or I can pick a random one from years ago and practice with the Sangha. Uh, I can pick any of the multitude of recordings that are the timbers and the walls of our Zendo, Zendo. Or I can just sit with myself and it is still exactly the same as if I were sitting right here, right now with all of you. It's exactly the same. It is exactly Samadhi. And now we will have a few minutes of uh, Zazen and then some more Kinhin and then we will close for the evening.